uh, 45 minutes or so is a program that that is called Real List. And let me give you a little bit of background about Real List. Real List is a is a national tax database um, that is owned by CoreLogic, the same people that I work for, the same people that make Matrix. Um, Real List is uh, a, is a, is a uh, is one of our parent one of our companies. We have about 99.8% of all the public records in the United States in this database. It is not available to the general public. It is only available to the realtor base and we sell it to uh, the MLS uh, uh, clients of ours. We will also sell this product to clients that are non-matrix MLS clients. So if uh, Flex MLS has an account in Missoula, Montana that doesn't use matrix, it uses their program like it did yours, we would sell it as a, uh, an ancillary product to them. We do that all over the country. It's, it's, it's a tax database. But with Matrix, we do a lot of integration with MLS data, which you're gonna which you're gonna see here today. There's there's gonna be two ways to get into Real List. Now, keep in mind too that what I'm showing you today, when you log in, you're not gonna see yet. Okay, so this is all just watch today because this is not what you're gonna be able to see. There'll be no Real List tax. Uh, tab for you yet until the end of this month. So there's two ways to get into Realist. The first way I call is going in through the back door. And the back door is when you pull up a listing in Matrix, there will be a little icon below the photo. Right now that, auto, that, that icon is called IMAP because Richmond has used IMAP, which is another product. Realist is Realist, IMAP is IMAP. They use that product, they've used that for a long time. Well, that product is going away in Richmond and they are integrating the Realist tax services in Matrix, which they already have and have had for at least a year. So they're going through some change also. They're getting a whole new tax vendor and you all are getting an MLS product and a tax vendor at the same time. So everybody's kind of going through the same thing. This button right here, when clicked, when we go to Real List, will display a nice one page report laid out very nicely with a bunch of information that pertains to this particular property from the public records angle. Okay, it's like looking, opening up like the, the sheet, the listing sheet for the public records, if you will. They're all gonna look the same no matter what county you're in. Uh, the amount of data that you see from county to county may vary slightly. Sometimes we have data from a county, sometimes we don't have it, sometimes they give it to us, sometimes they don't. So that may vary, but that's going to be a quick way for you to be able to just kind of get in and look at the public record side of the house without having to do much than clicking a button. Can you pull it up? I can't because I don't I have it here. on the Williamsburg side. They don't have it yet. Oh, you, you know what? We nope. got it in rain. Yeah, rain has it. So you know what it is. So it's not, it's not actually linked up to Matrix yet. Oh, okay. So that'll be towards the end of the month. You also will be able to go in from a single line display. There will be a column over here on the right that will have that same icon. And Realist usually uses a dollar sign icon, not the little I, obviously that's IMAP's proprietary icon. But you could also be looking at a single line display and without actually clicking on the MLS number and looking at the full listing detail, you could just take a peek at tax data right from here um, if you truly wanted to do that. You know what, let me just do this because I wanna just, I think it's important you see what's out there. I'm gonna pop into somebody else's site really quick. I'm gonna jump over to Connecticut for a minute and I'm gonna show you what it looks like from the context of a listing. So let me just, yours may look slightly different, but I wanna show you what it looks like. So now we've moved into Hartford, Connecticut as an example. So now I'm in Hartford, Connecticut. There's their matrix system. And you'll see there's a little dollar sign right here. That's what yours is gonna look like on your site. So let's just visualize that this is a listing in, in, in Williamsburg. And I wanna see the tax records. I would click on this link and it would go ahead and it would open up this one page report with a bunch of information here in just a second. So I haven't been in this site for a while, so I'm not sure how long it's gonna take or what it's gonna do here, but we'll see in just a second. So this should be just a pass through to be able to get into that particular uh, indication of tax. 
And also, just like you'll be able to on their single line display, they also have one of those quick links that you see right over here. And I'm not sure why it's taken so long to get into it, but okay, it's not available. Okay, I just saw an email on that a minute ago. I'm hoping we didn't pop down again. This may be a very short class at that. So, um, so that's what you're gonna be able to do. Hopefully, I, I noticed that so they said they just had a hiccup with it a minute ago, then it was resolved and now it hiccuped again. So I'm not sure why it's hiccuping, but it hiccuped, unhiccuped, pretty fast so let me just see if I can get to it from here and if not again our class is going to be just a little bit shorter than we thought it was going to be because of that um, so that will be the back door to get in so you'll be able to get to it from a listing whether you're looking at a listing or you're looking at the one line display there's also a front door into it and the front door is using the tab across the top of the page. So back door means look at a listing, slide in through the back of that listing and see the information. The front door is going in through a tab. So going in through a tab would be like just opening up a website that you would, would normally open up. But remember, you can't do this. You can't Google real list and open it up from there. It has to be part of an MLS product. And that's why only you can see it in this particular application. So I'm going to just see that that's going to happen again. So maybe we can just talk about this for a second until it went down and it came back up. I know they're doing some maintenance on it and I, yeah, you know, happens right in the middle of a class. This is a trainer's worst nightmare uh, for things to happen, but it happens. Well, let me tell you a little bit more about it. Um, here's what it's going to do. It's going to give you the ability to go in from the front door and search for public records in four different ways. It's gonna let you search for public records by the address of the property. It's gonna let you search for public records by the owner of the property, and that could be owner one or owner two. So let's say we've got a property that's owned by John Doe and Sue Smith. John is owner one, Sue is owner two. If you search by Sue Smith, you'll find the property. She's owner two. If you search by John Doe, John Doe, you'll find the same property. It also picks up owner one or owner two. So if you've got a property that's in two different names, she kept her name or he kept his name or whatever, you can find it that way. You can also search for it by property ID number or tax ID number. And if the property was ever listed in MLS at some point, you could actually search for it by the MLS number number in the public records. So think about that. That's kind of a unique scenario, right? So if the property was listed before, you could type in, you know, 1517640 and you could pull the property up. That's that's kind of an interesting scenario. That's what we would call the quick search in real list, either by name, by address, or by corporation name too. That also applies. Um, or by um, property ID number or by MLS number. Now we also have a kind of a full search, just like we do in Matrix, where we have the full search and the quick search. The full search allows you to search by probably about 150 different search fields. Everything from whether or not the property is owner occupied or not, when the last recording date was. Um, there's a massive amount of different things that you can use to search for the property. Now, when I talk about owner occupied, here's how it works. It's not perfect, but here's how it works. Owner occupied to us means that the physical address of the property and the tax billing address is different. Okay. So if the property address is on Kenwood Avenue, uh, but the tax billing address is in Sarasota, Florida. That's what we consider a non-owner occupied. Is that 100% accurate? Not really, because how many people here have second homes on the water that live in DC or somewhere like that, right? So, but that's just one way that we, 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 that's how we differentiate it. We have to have something like that. So that would be one thing. Now, you could actually go in Realist and you could get into Realist, yes. So <laughs> let me go and show you what it looks like from, here's that one page view. So remember what I just did? I said, okay, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna look at a property, I'm gonna click on the little link, and I'm gonna see it. So there it is. Now this is, this is Hartford, Connecticut, so please don't focus too much on this. This is actually a bank-owned property. Look at that, Wells Fargo, let's find a better one. Um, let's go find somebody that Wells doesn't own, which they own everything. 
Here's another one in a trust. Oh my gosh, let me go back and find one somebody actually owns. Um, does someone own this property? Please, 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 please. please. There, uh, oh my God, another one. What did I just pull up here? Um, I just, this was a hot sheet. This was a hot sheet, give me a break. There we go. So you're gonna be able to see things like the owner information, owner one, owner two. And let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Let me pop this up so it looks bigger. There we yeah, go. There go. Ah, so you'll see owner one and owner two. You can see the tax building address for Versus the physical address. You're going to see the zip code, the zip plus four, and whether or not it's owner occupied. Why is this owner occupied? This address and this address matches. You're going to be able to see the location of the property, the tax information, the assessments and taxes going back to three year rolling total, what the total tax was, what the change was in dollar and percentage amount from the previous year. You're going to see the characteristics of the property. Yeah, we're welcome to Connecticut. Um, you're going to see the characteristics of the property. And some of these characteristics come from MLS, some come from tax records. Now, what you're going to notice is in Realist, if there's a discrepancy between what the tax records say and the most recent listed properties say, we're going to tell you, you can't put a square peg in a round hole. The tax records say this has two bedrooms, but the agent that put this property in MLS, the last listing, put four. We're not telling you what's right or wrong. We're just telling you they don't match up, okay? That happens a lot. Um, listing information. We integrate listing information directly with the tax record. So now remember, we're in a tax record, but now we see, oh, there's the listing information. This property is in a, they have a, they have a, a status called deposit continue to show. So I put down my deposit, but if somebody gives me more money, I'm going to sell it underneath you, I guess. I don't know what they call that. So listing day, you know, current price, original list price. Here's the history of the property back before. Then you also can see the last market sale and sale history. This property was uh, recorded on the 10th of January, 374. Diego and Heike bought this one. It was a warranty deed. And by the way, on that day, they took out a mortgage uh, the $374,000 was the house property. And by the way, their mortgage history on that day, they took a mortgage out from Campbell wow. Financial wow. Services for $368, uh, $368,109 and it was a conventional mortgage. That's what you see the minute you pull up a listing and you click on the real list link, that's the information you see right in front of you, okay? Go down a little bit, there's two, there's a year built and there's an effective. Yeah, this could be the way they do things in Connecticut. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what, I, I know what you're looking at, but this is a thought, well, that's not good. Let me show you, let me go back to this one here. Uh, that's a split level, let's take a look at that one. Hopefully it's not owned by somebody else. So here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, you know, this is what they have. What? Uh, you, you, was your built. Yeah. Where is that? Uh, oh, there it is in the right. Nineteen fifty-eight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's on the right. Yeah, because if there's not okay, data, had an effective year. Right. So it, was that an addition? Could be. Oh. Yes. Yes, it would be an addition. Yes. So if that if that data is not here, we don't display it. So if there's not an effective year built field to pull, we don't fill it. So sometimes these will, you know, jumble a little bit. Like you said, you saw it on the side, but now it's over here. Look at this one too, look at the mortgage history. We go back in time, we go back to a mortgage they took out here, a mortgage that was done here, a mortgage that was done here, a mortgage that was done here. <laughs> so we go back up to eight different iterations. Yeah, and you can see how they did some stuff over here too. I We went through this with my parents a while back too. We did the quick claim deed, sold it for a buck, we own it, life, living state, whatever. So that's what it looks like just from the get-go. So you'll get that type of information in your system and this is printable obviously. And if you wanted to launch into the full real list system, you could do it from here. You could also run comparables. You could get some charts and graphs and you could also do a neighborhood demographic report. So this is, this is not you, but this is very similar to what you're gonna get. Let me show you now what it looks like in your site. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to click on the real list option across the top. Sorry for all this. This is the front door. So this is, oh no, no, don't do this to me now. I think I broke it. No, there we go. Thank goodness. So now you're going to come in through the front door. So think about this as just like opening up a website, right? And this is the real list website. What was the, what was the icon you clicked on? It, real list. Real list. Real list. What's up at the top? Yeah. Right there. This is real list. Okay. Yeah. So now when you're in real list, 
Realist is made up of three parts. It has a search form, it has a map, and it has a one-line display. Here are the different regions or counties that you can search in. So look at you got all of this now at your fingertips. So this was James City was recorded. The last time we updated it with the sales and recorded deeds was on December 12th. What's another county real close? York City, Williamsburg City, City, that was updated on December 17th. So we have York, that was updated on December 23rd. So all of these may be a little bit different because we get the data at different times. Most of the times we get an electronic feed from the individual county, or if we don't do that, we actually have people that actually go and get that. We put boots on the ground and get it manually. And then if we get it manually, we actually go in and we have double key the information. So I key it in, I give it to someone else, they key it in. If what we do matches up exactly, it passes muster. If it doesn't, it goes back to be audited from there. If the information is wrong at the source, it's wrong here because we get it from the source, okay? We don't do anything to it other than get it from the source, okay? One question. Yes. What about mortgages ever being paid off? Will it show that as well? It will not. It only shows the origination and it doesn't show the current balance either. That's, we just show what it was originated with. Oh. Sometimes though with a little forensic detective work, if somebody's got a mortgage, then a, the second mortgage and something else, and you can see that equity is being pulled out of the house, sometimes that gives you a little indication assuming sure. that's what they're doing. So I'm going to do James City. Now, yeah, question for you. Wait, yeah. Right now, when we um, click on the county record yep. and get it, we have no legal liability because it's a county record. We okay. use the county record. If we now are using Realist, mm -hmm. do we have the same Yeah, there's no, there's, there's disclaimers everywhere on Realist. Yeah. So there, I'm sure I'm 100% sure. I'll, I'll look and we pull up a report. We'll see the disclaimer in a second. Okay. So here's the three different ways you can support different ways. Address, owner name or corporate name, MLS number or parcel number. So I'm going to just do something really easy. I'm going to type in my name right there. I want to see how many people have my last name in James City, Virginia. Within one click, there they are right there. There's actually seven of them. So now I see I ran my search. And now, you know what, a lot of times after I run my search, I wanna kind of fill up the screen, so I just kind of slide that over. And then for now, I'm just gonna pull up the map, so I'm gonna just bring up the map. See what I do, I just come up and I say, okay, map, maybe I wanna split it, maybe I just want the grid, or maybe I'm gonna, again, do whatever I wanna do. So now I've got all these little markers on here, right? And by the way, these maps can be printed, they can be emailed, and you can also save them as a PDF file. Okay, so you've got all those different options. So now from here, before I start clicking down anything, if I go to the right-hand side of the screen, I can now add some really cool borders. Maybe I wanna go and add my zip codes in there. So now I can go and plaster my zip codes all over the place. And now you know what, that's kind of far out, so let me zoom in a little bit. And as I zoom in, it'll start putting in the actual zip code numbers. Yeah, that's okay. Can I also do my counties? And by the way, you can do six of these borders at one time. So I could mix the counties and zip codes together. So there you've got that. Uh, Here's one that I guess is probably pretty popular around here, right? Um, your flood zones. Mm -hmm. now, of course, you want to double, triple, and quadruple check all those, right? For liability. But we get this from FEMA, and that's, you know, obviously you're going to want to check that a million times so you're not liable in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> so those are some boundaries that we have. We also have the ability to come in here and say, let's just take a look at the median sale price in this area. Kind of a paint by numbers thing, right? Um, the warmer colors are more, the darker colors are, are, the cooler colors are less. Maybe we want to kind of take a look at the sales activity. Again, the warmer colors show more, the lighter colors show less. Now, when was that sales activity from? If you hold your control key down and click it, it'll tell you that's a rolling total as of October 15th, and that was 291 in that zip code for single families right there. Mm -hmm. So you can go through and you can kind of click and you can see the uh, sales activity. Now, this is, of course, sales activity that has been recorded. This could be FISBO and MLS data, right? Because it's recorded, so it is what it is. So now I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna look at my map again. 
And of course, I could also put on some uh, points of interest if I was zoomed in close enough, just like you could do in Matrix, you've got those points of interest right there. And I can also get driving directions on my map, which lets me go from point A to point B. But what I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I wanna look at one of these, and I had one that I was looking at before, and I wanna make sure I get the, the same one I was looking at. Uh, I was gonna get Walter here. So let me go ahead and split this view and click on uh, Walter's name right here. So when I click on his name, it's going to show me where his property is located. So it's right here, clearly. I can click on any one of these and kind of walk the block and see exactly what's going on. You see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of walking the block here and clicking on things. So now I wanna zoom in on Walter's property. So I'm gonna click on the little magnifying glass and I'm gonna zoom in. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it or not in here, but yeah, you can. Can you see all the different little squares on there, yeah, the little plaques? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Now, let me walk around here. Let me click who lives next door to Walter. Let me see, that's William. Who lives next door over here? That's that person. You can actually walk the block and go and see who is living here. In fact, if you're a voyeur, you can actually measure their lot if you want to. So now you can come through and you can click on the little ruler and you can measure their lot as you walk by and see all this information. Now, if you wanna put this into an aerial view, you can even do that. That's pretty cool, right? So now we can see the plot lines and we can see everything else that we wanna see. But I need more than that. So when I click back on the marker, I can now click on the little icon that says view reports and now it's gonna give me a bunch of information. So now it's gonna show me the aerial view of that property if this property uh, had been listed in MLS moving forward, it would actually show me the actual, fit, the property, the picture that was the primary shot in MLS. But right now this is an overhead shot. So I've got some basic information right here. And as I scroll down, you're gonna see this is pretty much what we saw before. There's the owner information. Remember on the one I showed you in Connecticut, owner one, owner two, owner occupied, yes. The address and mailing address are the same. There's the location of the property, including the legal description right down here. It's gonna show me the assessments and taxes over the past three years, 2015, 2014, 2013, taxes versus any changes. So this one looks like the three years worth of taxes stayed the same. Here are the characteristics of the property. Uh, and again, since we haven't been using MLS data to help build this, you're not gonna see those discrepancies right away until we have this property being, if this property was being listed, you know, in starting in February, then we'd have those, maybe those discrepancies between things. But right now we don't have anything to work with because we never integrated MLS data with this at first. This is raw tax data. Can I see the neighborhood profile? I was just wondering. Oh yeah, you'll see that in a second. That's super cool. Um, features. Matrix also provides an estimated value or AVM. Now, whether you like AVMs or not is in, is in your own mind. Um, everybody's getting into that business now. Uh, this is not a Zestimate, by the way. I can't go and change this and make my house look better than what it really looks like on Zillow. This is an AVM or an automated valuation model that is done by CoreLogic. It is uh, the AVM that is actually used by the top 100 lenders in the country when they're formulating decisions on lending money. They don't use a Zestimate, they use CoreLogic's AVM. It is a, a mix of public records and MLS data together in a cauldron stored up and it comes up with uh, analytics with really smart people that put this together. And by the way, this AVM was done on Christmas. You'll always tell you how old the automated valuation is. We do those at least every couple of weeks. They're not something that was done three years ago, which has no value. The value is between 300 and 367. Well, there is a fudge factor. There is a deviation of 10% either way. So it goes 10% less or 10% more. So, I mean, that's based on the data we have, there is a fudge factor in there. That's, you know, that's the, how, it, how it puts it out. And we'll tell you right here that this is 10% plus or minus, and out of a score of one to 100, we're 85% confident that that's gonna fall somewhere into there. And that's all explained right down here in the, in the text down below. Is this just a different program than RPR? It is. is it the same thing? It's not the same thing. We, we think we have, RPR is fueled by a company called Black Knight, um, which is, Interesting, um, uh, and this one is a CoreLogic one. So, you know, okay. it's two players in the field. Um, here's the last sale in market history. This one was uh, recent, this one was last sold in 2009 for $385,000. Here is the 
recording history. So we can see here, that's who bought it, who owned it before, who owned it before, who owned it before. And then we also have the mortgage history down on the bottom of the screen. So you can see here was a, a back in 2010, they did a 30 year refi FHA through Prosperity Mortgage for 315. Before that, they did a resale for 313. So basically over the course of eight months, there, they paid off, what, $2,000 and then did a refi at uh, obviously probably a better rate. This rate was 4.3. Hopefully they got a better rate here to do that. And then on the bottom, you see a map of the property and the actual parcel line. All that is just one tab across the top. And by the way, you can email this, you can save it as a PDF file, and you can print it just like you see right here. So that's some pretty good stuff right there. Now we can also go out and we can run comparables using the Realist system. This is kind of like a one-click CMA. I click on my comparables button and it goes out and finds the comparable properties for me. Now, how is it finding those properties? That's the biggest question. Mm -hmm. If you go under the modify tab and go to search, it'll show you the criteria that it used to do that. By, by default, it's set up. It gives you the, the first 20. You can sort by distance. You can include both tax and MLS data. And you can say, okay, I wanna look one mile from the subject property, or you can change that. And then if you wanna get down into apples and apples, you can say, okay, make sure you show me bedrooms to bedrooms, bathrooms to bathrooms. Yes. You can also go back in and say, hey, look, I wanna go back 12 months. Maybe I wanna go back six months. Let's just change this to six months just for kicks and giggles and submit it. So now it's gonna go back and it's gonna go, okay, now you told me to go back six months. Look, I see less of them now, right? And you can see you've got your statistics over here, your high, low, and medium. In. and then you see your actual comps down here which are all checked by default you can uncheck any that you feel that you don't want to include and you can view any one of those detail reports if you need to but at this point if you're happy with what you see one click and you have your CMA from public records and from MLS data here's your map across the top is the red one the subject property it is yeah. There's your search criteria. You went back six months. There's your building area, um, um, d you know, square foot discrepancy. Your land use is the same as the subject. You went one miles. So you didn't care if it had a pool or not. You sorted it by distance. Here's your statistics, high, low, median, average, subject property based on those. And then here's your standard side-by-side -side grid. There's one, two, three. There's number four. And there's number five right there. Then you just go ahead and you click and you email it, you save it or you print it. You cannot make adjustments. You cannot change the way it looks and feels. It is what it is, but it's a one-click CMA, mm -hmm. okay? Now, speaking of being a voyeur, click on the neighborhood tab. Now you wanna see who all the neighbors are that are next to 6867 Arthur Hills Drive. Hey, no worries with that. Go see your neighbors and in just a second, you will see all the neighbors that are near there. And just like a CMA, you can go and compare neighbor against neighbor if you want to, okay? So there's 6867, 6871, 6863, 6859, and you continue to tab over and you can see all of that. If you were to print that, save that, or email it, it would print out all of those. It just doesn't display them here because you've got the arrows to do that. Now, if you don't want to do everything on the same street, you can modify it, and maybe you want to see everything not on the same street, maybe in the same zip code, same subdivision, same census tract, or you don't have a preference, and you can see up to X number of neighbors, up to 30 from a particular distance. Here's the one that'll blow you away. Uh, somebody brought this up to me on Monday. They said, you know, when consumers go to Zillow, um, they get all um, enamored about the, all the demographic information and all that cool stuff, that school information. You know what? I, I can't provide that to them. They're going to Zillow to get that. Guess what? They're wrong because the neighborhood profile now will take that particular zip code and it will start giving you all the stuff that Zillow has and more. So here's what it's gonna give you. It's gonna give you demographic information, estimated population, growth, density, median age, things like that. It's gonna break the population down into segments. So you can see, is this an older area or a younger area or what's going on? It'll give you the gender in that particular zip code and the marital status. It'll give you the median home sale price, the median dwelling age, the median value of equity in the home, the median mortgage debt, 
the five years or plus residency, 29% means people are staying there, you know, fairly long. It gives you the occupancy, owner occupied, rented or vacant, fair market rents in that particular zip code for studio one, two, three bedroom home. It's gonna give you the quality of life. Most people here say they work in services, retail trade, blue collar versus white collar. Here's the household income, by the way, in that zip code. The sweet spot is about seventy-five to one hundred thousand dollars. Is it that looks coming like. from the census? It's all census data. It's all so demographic it's, data. It's then. It's going to be uh, two thousand and ten, so it's five years old. Yeah, it'll be five. Some of this comes from census. Some of it, like I'm going to show you here with school and business data, is updated quarterly. So census data, census data. Uh, um, okay. Yes. There was a there was a uh, area up above, way up above. That said, there were forty-one thousand people. That's mm -hmm. not right. That's Estimated zip. population. Yeah, that's not the population of that subdivision. It's not. It's a zip code. That's it's, zip code. Oh, it's based okay. on the zip code. It yeah, it's that's zip code. It's all census based on on zip code. Mm -hmm. So as we scroll down further, we also see the educational climate. This little RPM gauge in the green, it's obviously better. This is what people claim they have for their education. And then we also have the schools. Now I have a five mile radius drawn. I can go back here and say, you know what? I don't wanna go five miles. I wanna look at my schools and I wanna go back three miles or two miles. Do I wanna only include public schools? Do I only wanna include private? Do I wanna include a mixture of both? What types of schools do I wanna include? If you're working with a buyer who only has middle and high school kids, do you really need the preschool or elementary schools? Probably not. So you can pick and choose what you want. If you don't want preschool and elementary, you simply remove them. This now will give you the school within a five mile radius of that particular property and it will show you the actual schools. It'll show you the distance from this address, the grades covered, the students, the teachers, the great schools rating, which is greatschools.org is a public website and the community rating. And it explains all of where that data comes from down here on the bottom. It talks about great schools and community ratings. So all your disclaimers are there. You also can click on any one of the schools and it'll go, should go right to their website. Well, that one didn't, that one didn't. I wonder why that's not hitting it. Let's, let me just like this one. It worked yesterday, darn it. Uh, oh, there's something we got wrong here. Okay, so that will go off to their websites. And then you also can go on and you can look at local businesses. And again, you can change that radius for more than two miles and you can pick which business type you want to see. And it tells you how far it is, what the phone number is, what the description is, and you can put all of that together. So now we've got, think about it. If this is a listing that you are selling, you know, in a listing presentation, this would be a pretty nice little thing to include in there, wouldn't it? Hey, by the way, here's this listing I'm selling and here's all the attributes about this uh, zip code and the property and where things are located. Or, you know, if you're, uh, you know, if you're working with a buyer and this is the actual house that they're looking at, you can provide this to them also. This will always say courtesy of you and you can email it. You can save it as a PDF file. You can even print it. So if I were to save this as a, as a PDF file, I could come in here and I could say, okay, I want to take this report and I wanted to convert it to a PDF file. In just a couple of seconds, it's going to take all of that information for me. It's going to put it into a nice little PDF file and it's going to open up for me right here. So everything I just looks just like that. All the disclaimers are there, it's page number, and it's all courtesy of you. That would probably take you hours to troll and find all that inter information on the internet and put it together into a nice little package like this. This is what consumers are getting when they go to Zillow. They're getting all of this information. You now have the ability to provide that information to them. So you've just made yourself you know, uh, have more value to yourself now. In my eyes, I think you do. I mean, this is great. Somebody said, you know, Zillow's doing all this. We can do all this now. So that's what you can do with any one of the properties that you see here. But now let's get a little scarier. Now we come in and we also can come in here and we can do some pinpointing. So now we want to look at some property characteristics. We want to see who all the owners are on all these different parcels. In just a second, you'll see all the owner names pop up. You can also see how big the building is that is on each one of these parcels. And again, you'll see all that pop up. You want to see how many bedrooms and bathrooms each one of these parcels have. There's the bedroom and bathroom count. You want to see the actual parcel number for every one of these properties. Those will pop up. And you want to see how big each and every lot is. You can see how big each and every lot is 
on each one of these parcels. So you can basically come out and do this. You wanna look back at the tax sales that are in the past 12 months. These are everything that has been recorded in the past 12 months. So if I zoom out a little bit, hopefully I will see some little bubbles pop up here and you can see all the little tax sales in the past 12 months. Whether MLS or FISBO, it was recorded. If you wanna see this one over here, just click on it and drill down if you need to. You wanna see this one that's sold in the past 12 months, click on it and drill. When was it sold? 9, 12, 21 of 15. This one was sold 9, 17. This one was sold on 2, 19. My birthday, look at that. And by the way, this one was an MLS listed property. And how do I know that? See the two arrows? It says view listing. Remember, I'm in the tax records, right? Watch this. I'm now back in matrix. And now I can see what that property looks like from the MLS side of the house. And I can just kind of link back and go, hey, look at that. There's the house right there. But I started out right in here, okay? So you can reverse back, flip back and forth between MLS and tax data very, very quickly as you, as you need to. Now remember, all of these things can be printed and emailed if you need to. So let me go back here and open this up once again. Pop it open and let me go ahead and just show you my grid at this point in time. So now I've got a grid. Now that's a simple search using a name, but maybe I wanna get a little more complex. Maybe I wanna to go to my search, which allows me to search for things like, you know, sale price, settle date, your bill, owner occupied, or if that's not enough for you, we give you all of these different things you can search with. What type of roofing material, if you wanna do that. Um, you know, zoning, whatever you wanna do, you can do that. So this is kind of the full search at this point in time. So here's, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go back to my map and I'm going to clear everything out. I'm gonna start over. And I'm gonna zoom in for just a second. So I'm gonna zoom in to a little area, let's say I'm gonna to try to find, it looks like a little neighborhood or something over here, if I can ever get the map to refresh here. There we go. So this may be a nice little neighborhood. So what I'm gonna do is think about this. Maybe I'm gonna do a just listed or just sold campaign. Okay, or maybe I'm gonna market to a target market. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna draw a little box and maybe I just sold a property right here. So I'm gonna box out that area, right? So I just drew on the map, simple as that. Lock, come on, lock, okay. So I just drew on the map. Now what I wanna do is maybe I wanna come in, I wanna market to the non-owner occupied homes within that little box. Maybe I'm looking for what? renters, right? That should be buying a home for me. So now I'm not sure what I'm gonna get here. This ought to be interesting. Oh, there we go, a couple of non-owner occupied properties right there. So now, how do I tell these are non-owner occupied properties? Well, it's pretty simple when I go back to my grid and I open it up, there's the tax billing address and there is, so it's 104 and 106. This guy probably owns both lots next door. Here's one on Newman Road, the tax paying address is here. Here's one on Westminster, there it is, and there it is right there, so you can see they're different. So what would I wanna do with this type of information? Maybe I'd wanna go and export it. Maybe I wanna put it into a spreadsheet and manipulate it in some way, shape, or form. Maybe I wanna create mailing labels. So now I'm gonna to market to all these non-owner occupied residences and I'm gonna go create my mailing labels. How do you create mailing labels? Is it a 5160, 5161, or a 5162? How do you know? You pull out your box and you look, okay? You can use the tax billing address or you can use the property address. So if you're marketing to renters, you're probably gonna use the property address, right? And you can actually customize this and I put future homeowner. You know, so I'm gonna send out my little mailer or maybe if I'm doing a just listed or just sold campaign, I'm gonna put in there um, again, something, you know, just sold the home and maybe you can use my services. What's gonna happen is you all get 5,000 downloads a month. It'll count down how many you've done and how many you've got left and how many are in this export. This is not a rollover minute. If you use your 5,000 in the first day, you're done. Okay, you can't beg, borrow, or steal them. Most people are not gonna download that much a month. We do scrub the do not mailing list. So if you try to export something that's on a do not mail list, you will not be able to see it on the, you see it in line, but when you download it, it's not gonna be a label that you could print out because we don't wanna get you in trouble, right? So we're gonna go ahead and create mailing labels for these properties. And in just a second, you will see my mailing labels. 
And now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna put them in my printer, click print, and I'm gonna print out a whole bunch of mailing labels that you see right here. Mm -hmm. That's a future homeowner. Gosh. Now when you're in Word, remember what you can do. You're in Word, so all I did was create mailing labels. If I don't like this font and I wanna change it to something else, you know what? Feel free, you know? <laughs> if you wanna change these to a different color, you're, you're in Word now. We don't care what you do at this point. So you can change them, put your labels in, click print, and you're done. It's that quick. That's how fast you can do things like mailing labels out of here or export the data into a spreadsheet if you want to. You can search by any of those attributes that you want to. You can actually go in and take that same search that I just did with that map grid and I can save that search and call it my farming area for renters if you want to. And you can always recall that same search over and over again. All your searches will be saved right here. So it's it's a product that really lets you do a lot, but I think the big thing is being able to go in and just you know doing a search right over here. You can do a search by owner name or by anything you want. It's just, it's really that simple. Let me just see if it actually does a corporation. Uh, I was looking for Raceway, but maybe that's not what they're called now. Um, so, you know, it's interesting how you can do that. I don't know if you have any of these here or not. I know these are all over the place. AutoZone, any of those? No, nah, I thought I was trying something. But you can look for corporation. You can look by owner name. You can look by anybody you want. You can spy on your neighbor. You can do whatever you want to do. Um, you know, go in and, you know, when you get access to this at the end of the month, go in and spy on your neighbor. Um, we have a help screen that allows you to get user guides. We also have some frequently asked questions, which is kind of a nice little thing you can go through and you can kind of fill in the blanks about Realist. And we also have video tutorials you can watch on how to use the mapping tool, the searching tool, the results grid. These are all nice little video tutorials that somebody did and you can go back and just watch the video guide from there. Support for Realist is done locally. So if you need help, uh, you would actually be contacting either Richmond or whoever would be doing that. I guess we don't even have that in there yet. If there is a discrepancy in the data, please obviously report it to whoever they tell you to. And then the people have people here have a direct liaison to somebody that Realist that will look and analyze the data and research it and fix it if it's wrong. Realist does have a Facebook page, have a Twitter account, have a bunch of YouTube videos. So if you wanna to go to the YouTube channel and see all the cool little videos that are out there, you can do that. If you're a person that you know likes to follow people on Twitter, uh, you can actually follow them on Twitter if you want to. So all that stuff is there. So this is gonna be part of what you're going to be getting at the end of the month. Right now, again, you will not have access to it yet, but at the end of the month, you'll be able to click on the link from a one-line report. You'll be able to click on a link from within the listing itself and see that one-page report, which again, if that's not enough, you can go into the program from there. Or if you wanna go into the front door, one click opens up the main page of it. The main thing you have to remember is which county am I searching in? And by the way, you can search multiple counties at one time, up to eight counties at one time if you want to. And then when you click apply, it'll go ahead and search that. Quick search, in and out quick, my search, much more detail. You search, you see the results on the map, you see the results on a grid. From there, you can do a multitude of things from there. So that's what you get, it's, it's basically everything. Now that was James City. Let me just pop over here for a second and show you one more thing. Let me go to uh, King and Queen as an example. So now I go to King and Queen, let me go back again and let me do that same type of search again with my name. Let's see if I find anybody. Okay, I found one person. Notice again, the same look and feel in a different county, right? So if I know where things are in one, I know where they are in another one, right? So it's the same exact thing. I can do comparables, I can do neighbors, I can do neighborhood profiles. I have all the same information from me. I can still walk the block in that particular county and see who owns that property. I can still zoom in. I can still come in here and look at that report. I can still put on my flood zones. I can still put on my boundaries. It's just a different county. So think about what you have to do today. You go to one county and you have to figure out what their search form looks like and where the information is displayed on the on the form. You go to a different county, it's all a whole new game, right? Here it's all the same. It's just that each county may have slightly different data 
Uh, and you may see more in one where you may not see the same in the other, but the way you do things, the way you view things, the way you can get information is exactly the same for all of those counties that you see there. This should make your life a little bit easier moving forward because you're not having to try to figure things out. And again, the data we get comes from the source. So if the source is wrong, it's wrong here. Uh, we don't do anything to it except take it, format it into our format and our views, and from there, it's available to you to look at from here. But if you do see something that's wrong, please let uh, somebody know about it and they will research it and uh, hopefully fix it or figure out what's wrong uh, as soon as possible, okay? Remember, you have access to this. This is not a consumer product, okay? And I would seriously, start using these neighborhood profiles to start setting yourself apart from Zillow because that's gonna be what it takes to get people off that site and back into your world again, right? So that's it, 202, we're done. Um, in about, uh, oh gosh, 28 minutes, we got the last class of the day, which is input. Input, if it doesn't apply to you, you're not gonna get anything out of it, okay? <laughs>